Well, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, then you've been enlisted as a soldier in a spiritual war. Welcome to the war. A war <laughs> where the end has already been declared as victorious. And here to reveal this coming fivefold warfare, along with how to overcome it, is prophetic voice and author Jeremiah Johnson. Come on in, Jeremiah. <laughs> All right. I hear you've been dreaming. Yes. <laughs> yeah, always a good dream when I come to Texas. I so, love that. God. I love that. So, um, yeah, we want to get into your book, uh, The Warrior Bride. I specifically want to talk about the five key areas of warfare. Um, it's interesting because uh, being in Christian television and having a huge platform, I can relate to a lot of these that you're talking about in here. I can remember in the early days, especially dealing with the Jezebel spirit. And uh, so I, I wanted you, you to unpack that a little bit. But first, can you share some of your dream from last night with everybody? Yeah, absolutely. So last night in the hotel room, I was having a dream where I heard the spirit of the Lord say that he was going to bind the strong man of Haman in America. Mm. And God began to talk to me again out of the story of Esther about how she was raised up for such a time as this. And I really think that there is that Haman spirit, which obviously speaks to, he had a lust for power. Mm -hmm. He wanted fame. And ultimately he wanted to wipe out the Jewish people. And I really saw several people uh, in the dream. God reminded me in 2020 in Washington, DC, I was with Lance Wall now. And I prophesied at the mall that God was going to raise up a generation of women at the mall that were going to confront a Jezebelic agenda in America in the mm. spirit of Esther. So I saw Lou in the dream last night. I saw De Heavelin Ford, and then I saw Christine Kane. And I kid you not, I'm in this swirl when I wake up this morning. <laughs> I go down to the lobby, and Christine Kane is right in front oh, of me. Wow. And so I had a chance to chat with her. Wonderful. But you know, you know when God's yeah, talking to yeah. you. You, so yeah, that's awesome. Well, um, <laughs> and we support women leading, don't we, baby? Yeah, yes, well, we do. Well, yes, you do. And others have. And it's a very humbling thing to to be in this position. And yet uh, it's a it's an important responsibility that I take very seriously. And yes. I feel like I was trained for 40 years by my late husband, Marcus Lamb. But, mm -hmm. you know, in talking about the five key areas of warfare, you mentioned uh, one of the areas of tack is just the family warfare. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so I had this amazing prophetic dream. People ask me, how did you write the book? So I'm in this dream. I see this beautiful woman in a white dress. And as I look down at her feet, she has commando boots on. It's on the cover. Yeah, and Good so I, <laughs> I, we fought for that to get that on the title. But I knew it was a warrior bride. We're in the end times. And there's this sound of war. I, I hear the hoofs of horses. I, I hear trumpets blasting. And there is this invitation for her to come and sit down at a table. And on the table, I see like this piece of paper that says five demonic strategies. People ask me, where'd you get them? The dream. Mm -hmm. And I see these strategies, the first one, family warfare. And God began to talk to me about two things specifically that we need to uh, be aware of regarding family warfare. One, uh, regarding prodigal children. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord reminded me in 1 Kings 17 where Elijah takes the widow's son and she takes the son up to the up. He takes the son to the upper room and stretches himself over her. And I heard the Lord say, parents who are grieving over their prodigals, you've got to return to the upper room and stretch out your faith again. So there's yeah. a real word for parents right now dealing with prodigals. Don't pray from emotions. Don't pray from just grief ascend to the upper room and get into that place of prayer. And then the other one was regarding recent deaths in family, mm -hmm. spousal deaths, you know, a child passes. I saw a real spirit of grief that was birthing offense and it's okay to grieve loss, but there was a demonic spirit woven into the grief mm -hmm. that was bringing up offense and chaos in family units. Yeah. Wow. That's really Good something. Word. I know that, um, You've written the book, Prodigal Parent, and yes. that, uh, that came out of trying to uh, help a family. And one of the things I want you to know, those of you that are watching, 
It's just like um, Jeremiah said, don't pray out of that emotion, but really trust God with that prodigal and know that he's working. And like you said, um, don't be weary and well-doing. Continue to pray, don't faint. But at the end of the day, the child has to make that decision just like the prodigal son did. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. right? That's, that, that's right. And I, I want to say you might be that prodigal. I was. And everyone listening has been a prodigal of God at some point. And if you're listening, you're like, you know, I need to go back home. I know my grandmom's praying for me. I know my dad's praying for me. And I got to go back home. Yeah. And that's you right now. It's you right this minute. And I want you to just say that prayer you know to say. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Forgive me. Forgive me. I need you to be Lord. I need you to be Lord. I need to come home. I need to come home. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And if that's you right now, I mean right now, I want you to take your cell phone out and call 1-800-329-0029 because we want to get you that book. Now what? Because it's great that you're saved and, and today you're going to learn you're in an army, you're in, a, you're, in, you're in war, but we need you, but you need to grow up and mature and be strong and get in a local church, but call that number. Let us know so that we can be assisting you in that process. I just felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, somebody needs to come home. And I was that somebody. So if you did that, be that somebody and make a call. Let us know. We love you very, yeah. very much. Jeremiah, you talk about the Jezebel spirit. That was the number two, mm -hmm. right? Yes. First one's family warfare. Number two was Jezebel spirit. I, I've dealt with that spirit and, you know, I've been killing that spirit for 35 years, right? So I, I get it because I dealt with sexual addictions and impurity. I'm a, you know, counselor. So talk about what God showed you about that. Yeah, in the dream, it was specifically the toleration of Jezebel. Revelation chapter 2. You know, and you tolerate that woman, Jezebel. And, it, and it's ultimately about authority. You know, the reward to overcoming that spirit is authority. So I tell people oftentimes that spirit targets people in authority. Uh, one guy said, you teach people how you want to be treated. And so in the toleration of Jezebel, how we're going to get free from stop tolerating Jezebel is we're actually going to have to set up boundaries. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to learn how to say no. You know, that Jezebel is a controlling, ma manipulative, seductive. Mm -hmm. It takes many forms. But I, I believe that rather than maybe talking about people operating in it, God is actually warning an end time army. You've got to stop bowing down to it. Amen. You've got to stop the peace treaties. You've mm -hmm. got to learn how to war for complete freedom Amen. from tolerating Jezebel. And I get even in, in my own family, my mm -hmm. own story, especially those that you love mm. who you know our wrestle is not against flesh and blood that's right it's against principalities and powers but when you know people are operating in mm. that spirit not tolerating it is going to look like hard conversations it's going to look like boundaries and so i just really believe god is freeing a generation and Amen. it's just going to come from a lot of health and wholeness yes. in jesus name you Amen. know there was um a dear uh, woman that we loved, Irene Gleason, that did a great work in Uganda. And Rebecca actually went there and and lived there for over a month and just incredible work. She's gone to be with the Lord. She's from Australia. But early on in her ministry, a man of God sat her down and said, you're operating with a, a, a Jezebel spirit. I mean, it may be in the early part of it, but, and she got really mad, really upset, mm. went home that night and prayed. And the Lord said, yes, you are. And so she got delivered from that. I know Amen. that Praise it's God. it's one of those spirits It's very difficult to get deliverance from. And I know that just like you talked about, mm. Marcus and I, we had to deal with that many times mm. in ministry. The one thing that I learned is that number one, you don't back down yes. from it. You don't allow the accusations. And, and it's interesting how Jezebel will always try to accuse the brethren on the way up. Mm -hmm. And they, they go toward, they go after the prophetic, they go after control, they go after power. And um, sometimes it can seem very innocent, but you never turn your back and run mm -hmm. like Elijah yes. did. Yes. You've got to face her and it is a spirit and it can operate in a man or a woman, mm -hmm. but you've got to face it head on and deal with it and not be afraid of it. How important is that? Yeah, the book is a call to war. I mean, it's it's a call to stand at the gates of your marriage, your city, your mm -hmm. nation, 
and we have got to stop tolerating this spirit in America. And it's going to take mm -hmm. courage. You have to know what you're dealing with. You need prayer support. But I, I agree, it really targets leadership. It's after authority. It comes mm -hmm. through teaching ministry. And so I just felt like the Lord is sounding Amen. the alarm no, to the bride. Thing. Stop when, when, tolerating. When half, when half the church is addicted to pornography. Yes. We got to say no. Yes. And we got to start healing those people and setting them free. You can't have a sexually pure church doing warfare when it's in agreement with the enemy's warring strategy. And that's a lot right. of times you know? that spirit so. is connected to lust and sexual accusations, sexual accusations and other kind of All things. Kinds of stuff. And it, they kind of thrive in that. And that's how she operated. Um, the religious oh, spirit. We the religious spirit. Yeah. Oh, my. I mean. If we've been, he got excited. <laughs> oh, no. Been, you've been attacked by that. Yeah. I have been attacked by <laughs> oh, that. Been attacked you've by been that. attacked by that. But, you know, um, we're reading through the book of Matthew now. We, we we're going through the Bible together. We read together every night. But if there's one thing that is clear to me about Jesus is that he hated mm. those religious spirits, probably mm. more than anything. Give me the sinner Yes. Give me yeah, yeah, the yeah. woman that had been married five times. Give me the blind. Give me, give me the, the demonic. <laughs> yeah, give me the demonic. But when it came to the religious spirit, he had no patience for I mean, he called them all kind of things. And the church is full of religious spirits. Yeah, going into 2023, I asked the Lord for a passage. He said, Matthew 23. And this is where Jesus pronounces the woes, eight of them, over the Pharisees and the religious leaders. And he's addressing and confronting the heart of the religious spirit. One of yes. the translations says, the hardest, yeah. you are actors on a stage. Yeah. So the religious spirit is born in hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. It puts on a show for people and it doesn't really get to the heart. And so I believe that the religious spirit has a form of godliness but denies the power. Amen. I also believe that the religious spirit is the author of cessationism, which I believe is a doctrine of devils that says that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not for today. Mm -hmm. And it's the primary, I mean, I preached in so far this year 50 conferences and churches around the nation and the world. This is the number one spirit that I'm confronting in, mm -hmm. the, in the prophetic realm. This religious mm -hmm. spirit is blocking a spirit of revival and God is coming to expose hypocrisy mm -hmm. in the church today. You know, um, one of the things that was interesting as we were reading through Matthew is that, you know, the Pharisees would point out things like, well, you're not supposed to get the animal out of the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there'd be a miracle, and they'd or, say, and you're be, not supposed to heal. Or you're, you're and there'd be a great do, miracle, the, 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 and you're response, not supposed to, you know, because they were trying to always strip Jesus The, the religious up. spirit has a negative response to the supernatural. That's right. Right? And, That's and, right. And the, and the pure in heart. And But this, this religious spirit, going back to it, it's in the charismatic movement, too. Yes. It's in the movement that says, we don't have to preach the gospel on Sunday. Mm-hmm. We don't have to bring people to the altar. Or have them. Have, we don't have to say you need Jesus today. Like it's 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 like we can operate in the gifts. We have big screens and TVs, and we can sell our books. Oh, it's wonderful, and all that's good. But we don't have to say you need Jesus. Yeah, the religious spirit's going to avoid that genuine, authentic, mm -hmm. transformative yes, power yeah. of God in those moments. It's more after the show, the performance. Miracles and are messy. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, also... That's a t-shirt. Let's get it, brother. It's like you said, on the religious spirit, it's definitely a heart issue. And that's yes. what Jesus kept pointing out over and over about what was in their heart. Mm -hmm. And that judgment that would come forth from them was coming from a dark and very dangerous heart. And how, how, do, how do you change that? I mean, how can that we be set free from that? And how can we not allow that to influence us? Yeah, I always tell you, you, I always tell people, you can determine whether someone is bound in religion by listening to them repent. People that are bound by a religious spirit repent for breaking rules. People who are living authentically re repent for breaking God's heart. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to tell people today, if you want to get delivered from legalism, you want to get delivered from a religious spirit, it's really important to come to God. Don't babble. You don't have to pray our amazing prayers. Just, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I come to you right now. Please yes, forgive Jesus. me. It's that simplistic mm -hmm. heart connection that will free us from the religious spirit. Amen. And so what spirit was it that attacked you when you were uh, 
allowing the Lord to use you mm -hmm. and you maybe not right on point on every little thing, but of course there's so many things God has shown you that have come to pass. And uh, we know that prophetic people are not perfect. And yeah. I don't think Jesus was the only one that was ever perfect here, but you got a backlash. Was that a religious spirit attacking you? Yeah, I think that was part of it. Specifically, when I went through great deliverance, it was revealed as the spirit of witchcraft, mm -hmm. which you, is one of you the, get into this. Yeah, one of those. So that I mean, it could probably could have been traces of a lot of them, but I believe ultimately that witchcraft is an intimidating, dominating spirit. You know, Jezebel released that decree, so Elijah was underneath a Jezebelic, but mm. there was also some witchcraft in there. There was that mm -hmm. intimidating bullying and I know I came underneath that grip and I'm so grateful to be free now. Talk but about that more about that witchcraft thing, the threats and the, talk about that a little more. Yeah, I, I think ultimately right now in culture, witchcraft is being empowered through the media. Mm -hmm. There, I believe that some parts of the media could be the greatest false prophet in mm -hmm. today's mm -hmm. culture. And so through media, sometimes that intimidating, bullying, dominating spirit, and we're watching Watching TV, we're on social media, and a lot of times they're pushing demonic agendas that try to make people come underneath the power. And of course, it can operate in families as well. We're coming up on Halloween and all of mm. this stuff. People don't even realize what they're submitting their spirits to. But even in to. COVID, we saw that. Yes, it was a bully spirit. Witchcraft is a bully. That's right. It's a bully. It's an intimidator. Spirit. Right. Okay. So you also talk about um, the orphan spirit. Tell yeah. us about that and how do we recognize that? Yeah, rooted in fatherlessness. Mm -hmm. You know, I, over over my 15 years of ministry, specifically raising up young ministers, it's amazing to me how many can read the Bible, preach the word, move in the miraculous, but there's an issue with dad, earthly dad, or there's a disconnect. And so we live a life trying to strive for love rather than from love. Mm -hmm. And so I think part of that recognizing Jesus taught his disciples to pray, our father, mm -hmm. he's inviting them into the fatherhood of God. And so I believe God's going to heal a generation. I mean, all ages, but my heart that Gen Z, uh, that Gen Alpha, there's such a spirit of, it's an orphan spirit in this generation. We need moms and dads to step up and help to fill that void. And mm -hmm. I think also, I think about your story, Doug, when you were 19 years old and you got dramatically saved and delivered, that um, God really became your father. He's been my dad ever since. I mean, right. you he talks about him like that. And you have to establish a relationship uh, or help these young men, especially. Yes. Establish. And women. Yes. And women. Yeah. Let's talk about yeah, women. women and, too. You know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a psychologist, and so I, I, for the last 35 years, I listen to people's hearts. The most beautiful, intelligent women feel worthless and empty because their dad didn't speak life into them, didn't say you're amazing and beautiful. All right, and then same with the men. They're doctors. They're, they're incredible. They're the, the top in their field. And yet their dad didn't speak life. And those are the ones who struggle with the worthless feeling, the self low self-esteem thing, because their natural father didn't speak it into them. Yeah. And sometimes our spiritual leaders don't speak it into us. Our, but we need to hear the father speak it into yes. us. Like, you're more than enough. Are you kidding? You're my kid. I love you. I adore you. You're certainly beautiful. You look just like me sometimes. I love you, kid. Like, and let that inside your heart. Wonderful. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And let it in your heart so that you come from the place of, I'm a son. I'm a daughter yeah. of the king. You know, I'm glad that my mom and dad, you know, donated the genetics, but they couldn't make life, <laughs> right? Only God could have created me, and he created me in his image. And to celebrate that, if, you're, if you've got that father, well, we definitely want you to call and pray and say, I'm going to just agree right now. And no matter what my mom or my dad didn't say, I'm going to believe what God says. Yeah. And just have someone pray with you and say, can you just pray with me in agreement that I am adopted? So how did you do that for yourself? Because I know... You don't know really who your father was. You're talking to him or me? I'm talking to you. Okay. You're talking and to me. I'm talking to you're you. You're talking to me. And so, but at We're married. We at, do this. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> at, at, at 19, that was one of the things that you established. And for people watching, say, so well, how do I establish that kind of relationship? I'll let Jeremiah answer too. But how did you do that personally to where, I know you talk to him every day mm. and he talks back to you because you tell me, but. How, how do people establish that kind of relationship? Where did it start for you? Well, it's like, it's the opposite of what we're talking about. The religious spirit doesn't open their heart. Yeah. But when, you know, 
when Jesus talks about the prayer, he's like, you know, the guy who says, you know, forgive me, God, you know, that person's going to have a relationship with God, you know, and if you're in a situation where you don't hear God and you want to, just ask him to, to make himself known to you and, and, and speak to you through the word and speak to you through others. And he'll speak to you in the spirit. He can give you prophecy. He can give you wisdom. He can give you counsel. He can give you the fear of God. He can give you all of that. But it's really a hard thing. And just say, Abba, Father, I need you as dad. Yes, you're God. Yes, you, you run the universe. I get that. But I need you as dad, too. I need to know that I can come in and say, you know, today, it wasn't my best day. Okay? Can we talk <laughs> about it? Where were you, by the way? Right? And he can handle those things. He loves those conversations because he's like, I was here, I was here, I was here. Okay? So just open your heart and say, Dad, I just need you. I need you to be dad to me, you know, and to heal those wounds that my mom and my dad left on me because you're indestructible. You're going to live for billions of years. Those wounds are not going to matter after time. So heal them in time so that you can influence people that are in time now so with, that, with the spirit of adoption. So good. How would you answer that question? Yeah, God is so faithful to heal us of all our existing father wounds before he reveals himself as God the Father. It's just he's so much different mm -hmm. than our earthly dads. And so uh, to me, it's just a journey of that real mm -hmm. rawness. Uh, you know, the orphan, it's independent, mm -hmm. it's rebellious, mm -hmm. you know, it wants to do things its own way. And I just love that. Hey, let's be real. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, that that repels religion. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, when you would do that's why I love revival. In revival, it just like let's cut out all the fluff. It's just so messy. And let's though, just get Jeremiah. real. It's just so it. messy. I love the mess. People cry at the altar and they <laughs> scream out. Yeah. And you know, who wants to have a mess at church? I do. Yeah. Amen. And yeah. we need to have a messy church at the end of the service where they're crying out and they're and they're and they're letting their their sins be known, they're letting their faith be experienced and really hear Hearing the, hearing the gospel, we really need that. We need revival. Yeah, this we is this is this warrior bride. This yeah, warrior amen. bride is going to be on the offensive, confronting these evil spirits, walking in freedom, and they're going to help other people get free. Yeah, Your amen. ability to father others is mm. because you know God is yeah, Father. Amen. And I just, you're, that's, it's flowing. Yeah. This is a great book. I mean, I, I went through it, and you did a really good job, sir. Thank you. You did a really good job. This is probably a, a book for the hour that what the church needs to church leaders get get run this through with your kids and say hey let's look at this as a family where well, you need to get this book it's great i love it okay so we've heard about spiritual warfare our whole life one of the things that probably turned me off early on and i do believe in it absolutely obviously with what i do but um it's like there there was a, a time when people would be spending more time talking to satan <laughs> yeah. than talking to god you know and talking to entities and the second heaven and command, you know, and I'm yeah, like, we, we were not created or commissioned to do that, mm -hmm. right? And so talk about the right kind of spiritual warfare. How do we pray? And what does that look like instead of going into calling out entities over cities and that kind of thing? Yeah, the way that God instructed me to write the book was in chapter one, I shared this dream. And then it was really important, chapter two and three, I develop a solid biblical theology in spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the chapters, we mm -hmm. talk about these mm -hmm. demonic spirits because Joni, I, I do believe and have a concern that in this generation, we're chasing demons. Mm -hmm. and it's like, where is Jesus? Mm -hmm. And so I really took a lot of time in those two chapters just to help people realize who we are in him. I think it's really important, our identity mm -hmm. in Christ. Yes, we're, yes. Not, we're not warring on our own. He's given us the victory through his death and resurrection. He has uh, stripped principalities and powers mm -hmm. of their authority. So I really think it's important that people really do have this rooted and grounded in the word, knowing your identity. And I'm confident that those first couple of chapters will speak to that. I mean, and, and exegetically, I mean, uh, uh, when you look at the scripture, the demons came to Jesus. The, the, the demons went to Paul. They didn't go looking for demons. They didn't go, right. hey, I'm in town. Let me go find a demon. Mm -hmm. They didn't go looking for it. It came to them. When it came to them, the power in them was able to address it. And we have that authority in this earthly realm. Yeah, that's right. One of the things John Paul Jackson told me is that people who do spiritual warfare with their fist up, that's the wrong way. Mm -hmm. He said the posture that God recognizes is if my people mm -hmm. who are called by my name will 
humble themselves. He said, this is the posture, That's right. not mm. this being the posture. And so it's just important the way that we pray. And you're right. If demons come into our midst through a person, we have the power right. in the name of Jesus to cast it out, don't That's we? That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it, it's so important.